chapter 2 and uh, verse 11. And this is when Job went through his difficulties. And verse 11 reads, Now when Job three friends heard of all this evil that had come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz, uh, the Tamanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namanite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes as all, they knew him not. They lifted up their voices and wept, and they rent every one of his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was great, was very great. And uh, I want to talk about the six things to say to somebody that's grieving. The six things you can say to somebody who's going through trouble. The six things you can say to somebody who's dealing with pain. Keep in mind, you all know what happened to Job, about how he lost everything, how the devil, you know, sent havoc one right behind the other upon him, his household, his children, his livestock, and then he was covered with sores from the, his head to his feet. And the Bible later on said that he had had a stroke. And so when his friends, the three friends heard about it, they went to where Job was. And the Bible gives us some points of how we, when we have somebody in our family, when we have a child, a grandchild, a sibling, a co-worker, a spouse, a parent, a fellow church member, when somebody's going through, sometimes you may say, I would call, but I just don't know what to say to them. I would call, I just don't know what to say to him. And so today I want to share with you the six things to say to somebody who's going through a difficult time in their life. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, and these are the six things that you ought to say. You can write them down if you so choose. Number one, this is the first question you ought to, uh, this first thing you ought to say to them. When you get to where they are, you should say to them, you have my attention. You have my attention. When I come visit you and you say, uh, you know, had something traumatic to happen to you, when I sit down, I'm supposed to turn my phone off so that the cell phone won't be interrupting the conversation. Turn the television off. If they come to your house, turn the TV off. Uh, you, you want to make sure that they know that you're giving them your complete attention uh, to just listen to them. When I listen to you, that shows that I value you. It shows you're important to me. Have you ever seen a little child, mommy, mama, you know, mama, mama, daddy, daddy, and the mama just keep doing what she's doing, or the daddy keep doing what he's doing, and they just keep talking and they keep talking, and the, and the parent really not paying no attention. They just calling out, calling out, and calling out, and I never will forget, it was some little girl here. I think it was Colis when she was a little girl. You'd be talking to her, and, it, and uh, if you wouldn't pay her no attention, she would take both her hands to your face, and she would turn your face to her. And uh, she'd wrap them up and I'd be saying, yeah, I, I, I would sit down on the step mm -hmm. of the pool pit. And, and the kids would come around and talk to me, but when I would talk to Colis, Miss mm -hmm. Ladin's granddaughter, mm -hmm. she would take both her hands and put on my face, and she'd do this, and turn my face <laughs> to make sure that I looked her right in her eye. She wanted to make sure that I was listening to her. She said, I got good grades. I made a good grade. I made a good grade. And I said, yeah, that's good. And then she grabbed my face. Did you hear me? I made it. I said, yeah, I heard you. And, and so, uh, but when you listen to people, 
It shows that you value them. When I listen to you, Mother Gardner, when I listen to you, Brother Jesse, I'm saying to you that what you are saying is important to me and what you are going through is important to me. Don't nobody want to be overlooked. Don't nobody want to feel like that they are not important. So number one, the first thing you ought to say to them, you have my attention. Number two, you should say to them, what is your biggest concern right now? What is your biggest concern right now? That's the question. I can't help you if I don't know what you need. I can't be guessing what you need. I can't be be uh, uh, thinking what you need. And the worst thing you can say is, I, well, I know how you feel. No, you don't. You don't know how folks feel. Because everybody loves different. Some folk are, what make is important to you may not be important to them. Right. And the worst thing you can say is, I know how you feel. You don't know how they feel. And you need to let them express how they feel. So this is why you should ask, what is your biggest concern right now? Number three, I'm here to listen. I'm here to listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth. You're supposed to do more listening right. than you do talking. When you're dealing with somebody that's dealing with a traumatic event, somebody in sorrow who have been traumatized, somebody who had their heart broken, somebody who had somebody die to them, don't go there and just talk, 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 talk. It's running your mouth, running your mouth. Look at what the Bible says. It says, verse 13, it says, for seven days, and seven nights, he said, they sat there, and it says they didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that there? Yes, when you're dealing with somebody who's a really, I'm talking about somebody who really done gone through something. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is really listen. Yeah. Listen at what the song said that we sang. I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Not because he let me talk, 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 mm -hmm. but he heard my cry. And he pitied every wrong. I mean, y'all know God is a good listener. Oh, yes, and if we represent God, we need to develop our listening skills. So uh, I think the Bible says there's a time to speak. And there's a time to be quiet. Can I get amen? amen. And a good communicator, if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be a counselor, you got to know how to be a great listener. Number four. What do you need right now? When you're dealing with somebody going through something, you are there as a servant. I'm here to help you. What do you need right now? I can't help you if I don't know what you need. What do you need right now? Do you need me to go to the store for you? Do you need me to buy something for you? Do you need me to pay something out for you? Do you need me to go get you some medicine? Do you need me, need me to uh, 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 get some food for the family? Uh, what do you need me to do right now? Can I run to your house and pick up something? How many times you go to the hospital, somebody in the hospital, they can't go to get something at the house. And if they trust you, you ask them, what do you need me to do? They might say, girl, I need my gown. I need my favorite house shoe. You understand what I'm saying? I need you to go to my house and go to that closet in that back room and it's a bag up there on that shelf. Go get that there and bring it to me. You understand what I'm saying? What do you need me to do right? I'm, I need you to call my daughter. My daughter don't need know I'm sick. My son don't know that I'm sick. And this is my son's number. I've been trying to call him and I can't reach him. So I need you to call this number for me. I'm, I'm just using this hypothetical. Right. The point is, what do you need? What do you need right now? Number five, do you want to talk about? Okay. That's another thing you ought to ask. Do you want to talk about it? Because sometimes people, when they're going through something, sometimes they just may not want to talk right now. Mm -hmm. And when you and, and when you go there talking, when you're pressing them to talk, uh, you put pressure on them. And that's some pressure that they don't need right now. Right. Can I get an amen? amen? But right now, I don't want to talk about what I'm going through. Right now, I'm still, the word is processing it. Uh, right now, I'm shocked. I'm in shock right now. I'm trying to analyze it. 
I'm trying to figure out what my next move is. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. And so this is what the Bible, uh, this is the, the fifth thing you should ask them. Do you want to talk about it right now? And then here's the good thing, Mother Carrie Gardner. You said, do you want to talk about it right now? And if they said no, then you look, look what I was about to do before grab the hand and say, well, whenever you're ready, mm -hmm. or whenever you feel like talking, mm -hmm. I'm here for you. And, 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 and watch this here. How many times I've gone to a hospital or a nursing home where somebody died, I could, didn't even know what to tell the people. And this is what I did. I'll just do this here. Oh, they hang. And, 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 and to show you how effective it was, when I got ready to leave, a lot of them didn't want to let my hand go. You, did you understand what I'm saying? So sometimes, uh, do you want to talk about it? And if, and if they do not want to talk about it, you're supposed to say, I just want you to know I'm here for you. Amen. And don't be there for them when somebody dies because everybody's there for you when somebody dies. But when the funeral is over, that's when they really need you. Amen. I always got an amen right there. Amen. And then the last one is, I want to understand this more so I can help you. I need to understand what you're going through more so that I can be able, I'll be able to help you. Bible says you have not because you ask not. Can I get an amen? amen? So now these are the six things you can do, or uh, what you just said, six things you can say to somebody who's going through, through something. Now this is something you should not do. Don't go to a hospital and visit somebody and leave them feeling worse than they did before you got there. Amen. Can I get an amen anyway? Amen. The worst thing you can do is go to a hospital or go visit somebody and leave them and they are feeling worse than they did before you got there. Amen. Please don't walk in the hospital and say, God, you got this, you got my auntie died of that. Amen. Ooh, you look just like what you going through. My Uncle Bubba, he had that child, he didn't make it. That's the worst thing. You, my Uncle T, bless his heart, Uncle T, T gone on to be with the Lord. And I never will forget, uh, we went to a nursing home. Uncle T hopped in there on his walking stick. And we went to go see C.M. Robinson. Y'all might remember Reverend C.M. Robinson. His name was Curtis. Curtis Robinson. I should tell y'all, but I tell everything. And we went to that nursing home to see C.M. Robinson. And Uncle T walked in there. He was my deacon, you know. And we went in there, you know, to give encouragement to see Ella Robinson. But he'd been knowing Reverend Robinson since he was on Hollywood. And Uncle T, the first thing out of Uncle T mouth, hey, you don't look like you're going to make it. And I said, well, he don't look like he's going to make it. I said, Uncle T, don't say that, Uncle T. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I just ain't going to say nothing. I said, please don't say nothing. You don't ever go to somebody's room and say, Man, you don't look like you're going to make it. <laughs> don't do that there. When you go visit somebody, you want to leave them on a high note. You want to leave, want to leave with them having encouraged. You want to leave with folks yeah. saying, hey, man, I can make it now. Because Gideon came back. I can make it because Daisy came back. She gave me so much strength. Because Geraldine came back. I feel so much better. Because Jerry came by, ooh, he gave me a boost. Amen. Ricky came by, and I feel so much better. Hallelujah. When you visit somebody going through something, and somebody's sick or have a traumatic event, when you leave, you want to leave them better than the world when you came. And when you look at Joe's friends, the mistake they made were they started judging him. Yeah. They were quiet for seven days and seven nights. But when they opened their mouth, the first thing they said is, you must have done something wrong. God wouldn't whoop you like this if you had to done something wrong. How many of you know you don't have to do wrong for things to go wrong? I'm going to say that one more time. You don't have to do wrong for things to go wrong. Because later on in this lesson, Job going to say, man that is born of a woman. Yeah. It's a few days, and they full of trouble. And how many of y'all know if it ain't one thing, it's something else. 
And we go through things, and then I'm done now. This is the reason why we go through things. You go through things, repeat after me. Number one, you might want to write this down. You go through what you go through for your growth. You go through what you go through for God's glory. Whatever you're going through right now, Deacon Squeezer, is for God's glory and your growth. Miss Patricia, whatever you're going through right now is for your growth and for God's glory. Number three, you're going through it so God can teach you something. Number four, you're going through it so God can train you in it. What I'm going through, this is a teachable moment. Aunt Mary, what I'm going through, I'm going to learn something. When I come out of this, I'm going to be better. Marvin Sapp said, I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I'm better. So much better. When I look back on all of what I've been through, I know that I made it. It was because of you. I'm wiser. I'm better. I'm so much better because of what I went through. Can I get an amen anyway? Amen. So now I go through number three for my training, and I go through because God is trying to teach me something. And then the fifth thing, and this is what makes me shout, God going to bring me out in this time. Amen. Because whatever I'm going through is only for a season. And the Bible says in due season you'll reap if you faint not. You coming out of this. Only one person said, oh, I'm going to say it again. You coming out of this. Amen. I'm going to give you one more time. You coming out of this. Amen. Another fact, can I get you just point at somebody and say, you coming out of this. Point at tell them, you coming out of this. Right. Miss Patricia, you coming out of this. Jesse, you coming out. Miss Wade, you coming out of this. When I had that COVID, my God, I was down, busted, disgust, weak as water, but I kept telling myself, I'm coming out of this. Right. Sharon, you coming out of this. Amen. Aunt Mary, you coming out of this. Amen. You coming out of this. Amen. Now let me make you show enough shot. Miss Weasel, not only am I coming out, but when I come out, I'm bringing you out with me. Y'all right. come on now. Not only am I coming out, yes, sir. but when I come out, Amen. the testimony I have, All right. Russell, I'm going to bring you out with me. All right. Can I get an amen anyway? Amen. These are the six things that we ought to say to somebody who's going through something. Can I get an amen anyway? Amen. You can cut it off now. 